Hi, Longs. So here's my review on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 9, Episode 3. I just watched that episode this morning. Yeah. Um, the episode started off kind of like, oh, damn. Um, Candy got, a, you know, somebody popped up on Candy, like, knock, knock, um, and Candy at the Candy Factory, they here to do a meeting. And Candy's baby daddy's girlfriend from Jamaica, she's from Jamaica, mom. She, you know, popped up, and, you know, they went, Candy and her went back into the back, you know, to, you know, talk to see whatever, Candy just wanted to see what she wanted or whatever, what she popped up for, and, uh, of course, it was about Riley and having a relationship with her father, Block, I think that's it, Block, yeah, anyway. And so, because apparently he's like some, he's like wanting to do music, in the music industry like Candy, excuse me, but I don't think he will know him like Candy, I'm just, I'm just gonna throw that out there. That's some shade, yeah, that's some shade. But, um, and she's supposed to be his artist, and I'm like, oh, okay, so she's seen, ain't heard nothing, but okay, anyway. Um. She was like, I've been talking to Block, you know, to reach out to Raleigh, um, you know, and discuss, you know, talk to her. Because, like, I've never, I mean, they, I guess she's met Raleigh when she was younger. But, you know, Raleigh's at that age now. Because there was, I remember that first season that Candy was on through her house. Because like, they even showed the clip. She's like, I really don't want to have anything to do with him. Like, it, it didn't broke my heart. Like, Candy was just, you know, Candy was describing or, yeah, explaining, you know, there's been times where Riley reached out to him and he wouldn't return her calls. Or there's been times where he tells her he's going to come and get her and he doesn't show up. To me, personally, being a girl who had a father but then found out that that wasn't my biological father, that hurt, and I can only imagine not having a father in my life, because my father is dead and gone, and I can't say I would reach out to him because of the things that I've heard from my family. I probably wouldn't, because there's been times where he's told my mom he was going to come see me, and he never did. And so, I can honestly say I'd have been, I would be the same way Riley is. I would not want to reach out. And so, I don't blame her. And I don't blame Candy for not wanting to push her to reach out. Because what's the purpose of reaching out? Uh, you're, she's at that age now where, yes, she's at that age now where she's got, she can make a decision on her own. And... I believe she's a smart girl and she makes the right decisions. She was raised by a wonderful, strong black mom and she has a wonderful role model in Todd. So I can see that it wouldn't she wouldn't take a different path that most girls take when they don't know their father. Because I could have easily went down that road and I did for a little bit. But then I realized I have a father and he loves me just the same, and I didn't have to take that path, but um, but I see where Todd, Todd, after everything was said, Todd was like, but I see, she needs to reach out to him. She needs to at least open the door for that, and if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out, then let, I would let it go, um, but it's, up, it's ultimately up to Riley on how that goes. It's because Todd made the point she's like he found out about his daughter when she was younger and you know, he's like it changed my life. Like I had to be there for her and I wanted to be there for her. And that kudos that's good on Todd's part, but Block I can tell he's like a different kind of breed of man and I just don't know. I don't know. And, 
that's something boxing, you know, that's touchy. Like, you have two sides. You have her side, and then you have his side. And then, you know, somewhere in there, there is the truth. But, um, we'll see how that works out. There's, there were some other things that happened. So I'll discuss that in a minute. Um, Cynthia, you know, and her daughter, Noelle, they had a serious conversation last episode. And I didn't really touch on that in my last video, but I'm going to touch on it now. Because it was, Cynthia was like, Noelle was like, there's been nights that I heard you and him arguing and it made her question why her mom, why she was staying with him because of those arguments. And she even made the point, she's like, it made me feel like, do you, like she asked, do you have low self-esteem? Like, why would you stay with somebody like that? I mean, that's, she's at that age where she can understand and I would ask the same thing. As a daughter, but then in that same sense, as a mother, I'm like, I think Cynthia realized, she's like, well, I didn't realize, you know, that it was affecting her as much as it was affecting me. And I didn't want her, and Cynthia, I think Cynthia's like, I didn't want her to question my self-esteem. It's how Cynthia felt. I didn't think she realized, but I think she realized when Noelle said that. But okay, back to this episode. Well, Cynthia was talking to her mother and Mel, and Mel mentioned, she's like, I, Cynthia mentioned to her, to him that she talked to Peter. And Mel was like, I talked to Peter too. And that kind of threw Cynthia off, you could tell. And Cynthia was like, why was she talking to him? And, you know, they went outside and Mel was like, I, just, I mean, he called me and he was like, I just really miss my life. And Cynthia made the conscious, like, I really do miss him, but I can't be married to him. She wants him to be in her life as a friend, but not as a husband, which is, is understandable. I don't see anything wrong with that. You, you do have those people that are like, you can't be friends after no divorce. And I think that's a bunch of bull. Some cases, yes, you probably can't because it was a nasty divorce. But in some cases, if it's an amicable divorce and everything, and the parties are happy and y'all want to be friends, then cool, be friends. I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Portia talked to Phaedra about, she reconnected with one of her exes named Todd and how she's, you know, wanting a baby because her sister just had a baby. And she's like, I just want a baby from him. And her like, that sounds like some shit Monique said on Little Hip Hop Hollywood, I'm just saying. But, um, Portia met up with Todd and made he like, she talked to him about it after they got to work it out. And Todd was like, Yeah, well, he's like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't, you know, he wants to build something with her. Like, I don't, he's like, I don't want to have to, you know, have a baby with you and then not, you know, be a family. Because Faith was like, I want to, Portia was like, I want a family. I mean, but a family can either you, you be a single mother and you have your baby, then okay, that's a family, but it's also in that same sense, a family is mother and father and baby. And I think he realized that, and then Portia was, I think Portia's like, I'm not trying to get married. Like, she's like, I don't even I do want to get married, but I'm not looking for that. But he's like, well, give me that. Basically, he was like, give me that chance to win over your heart. Give me that chance to prove to you that we can maybe possibly have a future. Just, you know, give me that chance. Because, like, I can't be that man for you just to give you sperm and a baby and be like, Pete, we can co-parent. No. He's like, I can't do that. Mm. Shrey met up with her ex, Bob, which, that, that, that I never saw coming. I never thought in a million years that would be, you know, cool, because over the, like, the last couple of years that, you know, over the season, when Sheree was on the beginning of the season, her and Bob were like at odds. Like, they were at each other's throat. Now they're cool, and now Bob was like, he's like, let me move in. Like, what the? 
No, no, this is what we're gonna do. Sorry, like this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take baby steps. You're gonna stay in your house, and I'm gonna be in charge of my house. Y'all told you, right? You're not. We're gonna take baby steps. Like, basically, she was like, basically, until he can apologize for, you know, the infidelity. Uh, yeah, there's no chance of them being romantic. I think they're at the point now where they can co parent at least. And, which is fine. Like, I was hoping for that at least. That I ever spent in a million years that they were sitting here thinking about getting romantic feelings for each other. No, I never saw that shit. Because I was like, oh, damn. Okay. Hmm. People can change. Um, Candy met up with uh, Shrey and. They were talking about, um, they were, they worked out and they went and talked and Candy, you know, was telling Sheree about how her baby daddy wants to, you know, be a part of Riley's life and Candy, you know, discussed it with Riley and Riley said, if he really felt that way, if he really wants to be a part of my life, then why doesn't he come to me? Why did she, why did the girlfriend come? And until, I guess, they, Riley never, she didn't say no, but she said it's voided until he comes. Like, I'm not going to reach out just because your girlfriend comes. Like, you reach out to me. You come to me, not have her come. To, I'm not going to, I'm not going to want to have that conversation. Like, I don't want to, you know, open that door because Candy said that Riley's built up a wall as far as that goes. And he's going to have to reach out to her to break down that wall. And when I and when I say it's going to take some time, oh, buddy, that's going to take some time. Um, Sheree, they were her and Candy were, Candy and Sheree were talking about it. And then they went to, we met the baby daddy. And we saw the girlfriend again. He was like, they're making him seem like, we ain't never been cool like I ain't never been in her life. Candy's not saying that. She says it. She's not saying that. She's saying that if you've been in her life, but then you go out, you step out, and you're gone for years and years. He even put a picture today on Instagram saying, put some caption talking about we're all we're family or some shit like that. And Candy even made a statement. She's like, I never thought that while her she's on the show and she never thought in a million years that her whole baby daddy issue would be on the show but it is and it's a learning lesson for her and it's also a learning lesson for other women that are going through what kids going through with their baby fathers is how I look at it um because I think he's he was meant he was talking to some this one artist I guess she's an artist she was at his studio, I guess, and she's like, I know Candy, and they were discussing it while she, Candy and Sheree were discussing it, and Candy was getting emotional, and because Candy was like, I know how Riley feels, because I never had my father in my life like that, and Sheree was like, Sheree was the same way. Sheree was like, I never had my dad in my life either, and for him to sit here and think, and he made the statement, he's like, I'm not going to chase her, I'm not going to reach out to her. Why the hell not? That's your daughter. If you want to be in her life, and you want her in your life, then reach out. Be a motherfucking man and reach out. Don't sit here and be like, I'm not going to reach out. It's not my place to reach out. Yes, the fuck it is. That's your child. She didn't ask to be here. And Candy even made the point. She said when she was found out she was pregnant, he said, well, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't want to have anything to do with her. I don't want to have anything to do with it. And Candy said, that's fine, motherfucker. You ain't gonna, you gonna need her before she needs you, is what Candy said. And he, it's true. It is true. So, that episode, this episode really got to me because it hit home, close to home just a little bit. But, um, I'm gonna end this video here. And if you're new, Hi, and if you're watching and you're not subscribed, you know, hit that little subscribe button, girl, or boy, or man, like a woman, or man, like hit the, the subscribe button over there, um, and come along with me on this crazy journey that I call my life right now. It's not really crazy. It's really not.
But um, I'm coming out my shell a little bit more. Um, but anyway, yeah. If you're, don't forget to like, comment, thumbs this video up, um, share or subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and love my new subscribers and love my old dolls, and hello to the new ones, and ah, I will see y'all in my next video.